to Ben is here. <laughs> Hopefully he's made a deal with the devil to be a good guy. Welcome back everybody to part two of this extra long drama Friday. I had so many stories, good ones, this week that I do have more to tell. And although it has been an hour, I'm going to continue to tell them. Again, I remind you to check out PreachGaming.com to let us know if you're interested in coming to PreachCon and having an evening with me and Ghost and the team. That would be cool. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to tell you two stories. One of the stories is subscriber submitted. It's pretty long and it has no paragraphs, so I apologize if I make mistakes. Uh, but I would like to say that the final story... See, Ben? That's making a noise, isn't it? Isn't it? That's making a noise. <laughs> Uh, it will be from me itself. So I'm just going to put some quick paragraphs in here. Let's see if I can do this. There's some spaces I can kind of work with. Yup. This is a long story, my man. Okay, and that's the end of any full stops. Good! <laughs> we don't want too many full stops. That would make life too easy. <sighs> Holla Preacher! I send you a bro fist and a drama Friday story from the US. Not knowing where to start, here's a quick backstory of my WoW experience. I started playing when I was about 11 or 12. We do forget, don't we, that there are youngsters playing this game. We do forget that this game is built for youngsters and up. We're quite old now. I mean, me, I'm 29 now. Jesus. Uh, and that, that means that I'm really too old to be playing WoW. But fuck it, it's a great game. I don't give a shit. So, yes, I had no idea of what I was doing at all. I was really bad. I didn't cap till 70 until Wrath had launched. Oh, Wrath was 80 on it. <laughs> Either way, my story and rating history begins here. In Ice Crown Citadel. You poor bastard. You poor, poor bastard. Jesus. Yeah, me and Vinny are old school. Keeping it real, aren't we, Vin? We're keeping it fucking real. <laughs> hey, it's all good. That's how good WoW is. Just look at the ages coming out of here. That's how fucking good WoW is. It doesn't matter how old we are. We're still kicking ass. But me and Vinny are the fucking team. We started in ICC. That's not bad, actually. I take that back. It could have been worse. It could have been Nax. It could have been TOC. Wide range. I've got a wonderful audience. You guys are fucking awesome. Near the end of Wrath of the Lich King, I just capped my troll enhancement shaman. No wonder it took you so long to fucking cap. Why did you... Did you not see the character screen when you were making your troll? Did you not see it? At which point did you think, that looks good, he has no shoes? Oh, that's awesome. His tusks will sit out of, stick out of all my armor. What the shit is wrong with you? Why is anybody a troll? I understand they're the best DPS on Horde side, but at least you're mega hardcore. Don't roll a troll. It's just retarded. It's just retarded. <laughs> I really wanted to get into raiding. Unfortunately, forever alone face, my gear score was not high enough. Ah, oh, no gear score? Dude, I can't raid. I don't have a good enough gear score. Imagine, I can't think of a worse time to get into raiding. I bring it back. Joining the game in ICC in the midst of the gear score rampage must have been horrific. You join WoW, looks awesome. Take your time leveling, awesome. Get to cap and someone says, what's your gear score? And you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? You have to go and install it and you're just like, I can't raid because I don't have this number. That really sucks. After searching for a while, my cousin was part of a guild who was looking for people for ICC progression. My cousin had talked to the GM about me joining and I talked to him as well and was invited to the guild. When I joined the guild, a lot of people said welcome, and it felt good to be welcomed. Ah, <laughs> Cesspool Guild. Nah, probably not, but that's what happened. Cesspool Guild. Welcome, 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 welcome. Blah, blah, blah has left the guild. Blah, blah, blah has left the guild. This must be all right. This must be a good guild. I was 15 when I was invited, and extremely improved from my early days. So it took you like four years? Wrath of the Lich King wasn't that long. <laughs> now, because my gear score was low... Many people in the guild helped me by running a lot of heroics. My cousin was a resto druid and the GM a DK tank, so instant cues for the win, baby. Still think better is the, hey, we'll help you run. What class are you? A tank. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. After much grinding, I was finally able to do the Ice Crown Citadel. In the raid team, there was a Rouge. You actually said Rouge. You are my fucking hero. It says Rouge. I'm not even going to lie. I'm going to make it really big. No, I won't. <laughs> but it says Rouge. <laughs> there was a Rouge. <laughs> 
whose name I cannot remember. Forever alone, Rouge. <laughs> Anywho, I knew I would be uh, competing for gear with him. As an enhancement shaman? You mean weapons and trinkets? I agree. <laughs> I was right. For after killing Festigut, we stopped at 5 out of 12, and he won a ring and gut buster from me that night. You remember? Oh, this is class, right? This is your first raiding experience. Is you actually remember the items you lost. I lost the gut buster to this guy. You know what I mean? And I remember it so vividly because I was genuinely that pissed off. The gut buster! Which is a terrible fucking weapon. And I lost it. Oh. Fix the hoodie string. Is it bothering you? Hold on. There you go, bro. I don't want to OCD anybody. Not on my cool Preach Gaming hoodie. Available at the Preach Gaming store. Alliance style. Only noobs buy the horde one. Like Ghost. All you noobs out there with the fucking horde one. <sighs> Only noobs have got the black and red one. I'm just saying, right? <laughs> uh... Lo and behold, the next ICC run, I won the Whispering Fang Skull. Sexy trinket, I might add. It is a, sex, it is a sexy trinket. Blo drops off Lady Death Whisper, I believe, in 10 man, I want to say. And the rogue had asked me for the trinket. No. Throughout the run, he kept pestering me about it. He even had offered me like 5,000 gold for the thing. His last attempt to get was by saying I would quote... That trinket would be better for me because I could do better DPS than you with it. Sticking to my guns like a sir, I respectfully declined and said, no thanks. At this point, we were about to pull Saofang. All of a sudden, the rogue said in raid chat, well, thank you for the runs, guys. Left the raid group and left the guild. Hey, no fucking loss. No fucking loss. Bye. See ya. Don't give a shit. What a sad bastard eventually the guild <laughs> first drama of the story but it's not over eventually the guild didn't give a shit and we down professor putricide and the blood council without the super amazing rogue without his whispering fang trinket fast forward to cataclysm with a cinematic so epic i watched it thousands of times really yeah it was a good one wasn't it it was a good one shame that the cinematic is better than all of the dragon soul me and a friend were grinding our characters. My dwarf hunter. Really? What? Troll enhancement shaman. Dwarf hunter. Are you retarded? <laughs> Are you a retard? <laughs> Is that what's happening here? A dwarf hunter and his gnome mage. Your friend picks a gnome mage. You pick a dwarf hunter. Not even Gimli uses a gun. Right? <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Dwarf Hunter, don't do it. Say no, kids. Say no. About a week after we capped and started tearing up 2v2 as MM Hunter and Frost Mage combo, after a couple of weeks, I found out that my guild was going to start progressing Blackwing Descent and the Bastion of Twilight. I needed a hunter for the group. At this point, I was pretty bored with arenas and wanted to go raid again. I talked to my friend about it and he didn't mind that. I wanted to move over, so I faction changed to an Orc Hunter. Success. Success, thank you. On the first raid I went on, I was covered in the best PvP gear available and was topping the DPS meters as survival. Not too hard, right? No, it's not too hard. Survival's a great... I miss Cataclysm survival so fucking much. So much. I responded well to the mechanics, not having looked them up, and found that Magmar was my favourite fight in Blackwing Descent. Really? Magmar? Magmar? Magmar. Alright, whatever. Dwarf Hunter, all I'm saying. People who roll Dwarf Hunters like Magmar. Hmm. Troll Enhancement Shaman. Just saying. Just saying. Just pointing out the irony. <laughs> and uh, Blackwing Descent was my favourite raid. I agree, Blackwing Descent is an awesome raid. Besides that dragon. The blind one. You know, Archimedes, or whatever he's called. <laughs> you know the guy I mean. He's in that video that I made. After many weeks of progress, Archimedes. I know what I'm talking about. I was in before Ishapur, I win. Eventually went back to console... Uh, banging our heads against Nefarian and Cho'Gal. I eventually went back to console games and really only showed up for the raids. On occasion, I had things come up and were not able to make some raid days and was soon replaced by a Blelf male hunter. Damn you, ghost, and your Blelf race. <laughs> a Blelf male hunter. Ugh. 
Soon Firelands was announced and I was very interested in getting back into raiding again. During that summer I had recruited a friend to the game and got him a prop pally and survival hunter to 85. I had also managed to find another guild to raid Firelands with, but this guild was led by, you'll never guess Preacher, a husband, arcane mage and a wife, Resto Druid. After many weeks of raiding, we had really good progress until we got to Alice Razor. Am I pronouncing that right? Can you say it phonetically for me? Alice Razor or Alice R Alice R Razor? How do you guys say it? Alice Razor or Alice Razor? I say Alice Razor. Alice Razor? Alice Razor? Maybe. Every time we would wipe on Ali, it was because the GM's wife would always die to the tornadoes. Those fucking tornadoes. Did that separate the men from the boys or what? The ballers, of course, not only dodged tornadoes, but continued to DPS Alice during all that phase like a fucking gangster. All is Razor. All is Razor? That doesn't work. Demnados. <laughs> Demnados. There's three stages of people. Can't cope with tornadoes, can dodge tornadoes, DPSs with tornadoes. Yeah, motherfucker. That's how fucking baller does it. That's, uh, I say how Preach does. I win now. Okay, I'm alright with that. Fucking right. Separated the women from the men. Dude. Too soon, bottles. Too soon. <laughs> and don't like it. Don't like it. Uh, that was that. It was because the GM's wife would always die to tornadoes, among other things. The worst death you can have on Alice Razor, the most embarrassing death ever, is from the worms. Who here has died to the fucking worms breathing fire in the slowest circular motion it's like you're teasing a clitoris it's that slow it's like yeah and people die to it what are you kidding me how can you do that only to wipe intentionally my dad's like well i use it to wipe there <laughs> no <laughs> i did as a priest healer oh no if you fly you don't have to worry about it strunson's like what's a clit <laughs> Google it. It'll help you out long term, I'm telling you. <laughs> on the side, I was also leading pugs into Blackwing Descent on my Dwarf Shaman. A Dwarf Shaman? Oh, God. You have the ugliest character screen I have ever fucking heard of. Ever. EU. Two dwarves, one character screen? That's filth. That is dirty, dirty stuff. My God. Ooh. Ooh, two dwarfs, one character screen? No way, not for me. Not me. On the fourth time, <laughs> uh, uh, leading pugs into Blackwind Descent on my dwarf shaman. And would one-shot him every time. Yes, he was nerfed, but still. One-shot who? I assume you mean the instance. Okay. On the fourth time, the GM had logged online and got into vent and was kicking out the people in my vent channel for my raid. Mother, f I fucking hate vent fucking i kind of want to say nazis vent nazis who get really protective over vent Ugh, really people kept logging in only to be kicked out again he's so brave he doesn't know how to ban people i was eventually dragged into another vent channel and the gm started to talk very angrily i had told him i was doing a black wind descent 10 man run there's 10 people in your vent after hearing this he started shouting at me because i never asked to use the vent you should ask you should and he didn't want other people to have the vent information now it was his vent server, but I was never told I couldn't use the vent channel. Nah, you should still ask, it's not yours. The raid fell apart after this and I was not going into a guild where I would get yelled at for something so silly. Mm, kind of your age showing through a little bit there, you should always ask if it's somebody else's, right? You should always do it. Uh, but still, just going in and kicking everybody, what you should do if you, if you own the vent is go and say, what's going on here? Oh, well, I'm running a pug. Alright, well, next time can you ask me? You know, just be polite. From here on out, me and my new friend Wow went on such a terrible string of guilds that we got really sick of finding a new guild every day. <laughs> when searching for one guild, my friend had run into my old GM who raged at me. After talking with him for a while, the GM said that they were looking for a hunter because they recently kicked one due to his terrible DPS. You need the dwarf, man. You need stone farm. There's nothing better for a hunter than stone farm. Max DPS. What attracted you to a dwarf hunter? I just don't get it. <sighs> Even though I was the best DPS and would never die. Um, it's terrible DPS. We eventually found a guild back on the ally side and we raided with them. Me as Enhance and my friend as a survival hunter. 
An occurring theme we started to notice that there was always something wrong with the guild. With this guild, it was that their raid times for on cleanup days, I assume you mean farm raids, the GM thought it would be a good idea to raid from 9 till 12 p.m. on a Sunday. Being 16 by now, we had school to go in the morning, and we thought, oh, 12 p.m. Oh, at night? Oh, my God. 9 or 12 in the morning is bad enough. Raiding Sunday nights? Fuck that. I used to raid Sunday nights. It sucked. After four weeks of having to leave early on Sundays, we were removed from the guild the next day, and we were on the GM's ignore list. So nothing really happened until Dragon Soul launched. The Nax of Kata. I wouldn't say it was the Nax. I had got my DK to 85. And ev what, what kind of DK? I need to know. You better mention it later. And every spec was a joy to play. Mostly blood. And my friend took an interest in his rep pally. What kind of fucking DK is it? What are we betting on? If it comes up later, it might not. No. Uh, what, what kind of DK is it? Okay, I want to see. The TOC of Kata? Mm, uh, maybe, maybe. Dwarf. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> Alex Strand is like, dwarf, dwarf. Tappy is sick, doesn't get it. Oh, Chillblain doesn't get it. What race is his DK? Frost. What race is your DK? Blood. <laughs> Unholy. Zakanda's there as well. Unholy. <laughs> Here is where the real drama begins. <laughs> Tap it. I tried. I tried. Wanting to progress the Dragon Soul, we were searching for a new guild once again. I cannot believe how many guilds you've been in. After a while for searching... For, uh, a while... Of searching, my friend had got uh, every single bit of this about you finding a new guild involves your friend finding it. When you say you're looking for a new guild, do you mean your friend was looking for a new guild while you just, you know, kind of watched? <laughs> the very first run, my friend didn't do very good DPS due to having some tank gear on his character, but he was third on the DPS charts in a 10 man group. The GM had asked him if he wanted to do a run next week, and he said yes, and asked if I could come as well. The GM said, yeah, if a spot was open. Next week comes around and only one spot is open. Do I even have to do it? Forever alone. Again, the GM had asked if he could come again and the next time as a trial. And I could come if a spot was open. Again, he said, yes, next week soon came around. Only one spot was open. After that raid, my friend had gotten the spot and was invited to the guild. I soon followed as a standby for anyone who didn't show up. Forever group two. <laughs> yeah, your friend can come along. You bring on your little friend too. Yeah, sure. Come along. I want to point out here, he shouldn't have expected a spot. He hasn't even raided with these guys yet. He was just like, yeah, if someone doesn't show, we'll bring your friend. No problem. But people show because it's a raid guild, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> After a couple of weeks of filling on my Blood Unholy DK and my Enhancement Shammy, I decided I want to find my own guild and raid spot for being Group 2 is just a stabbing. Correct. After searching for a week, I found a guild who needed an Enhancement Shaman, but then they saw I was a dwarf and didn't invite me. I'm just kidding, but it should say that. So I left my current guild to join this other guild that week on a trial run. About halfway through the raid, I got a message from the GM on Real ID. What the fuck? You've never even raided these guys. Why do you want his Real ID? raging at me for leaving the guild. He said that they spent so much time gearing me up on multiple alts to fill in for people who didn't show, and that leaving the guild was how I thank them. Well, thank you for filling in when we couldn't raid. <laughs> nice thanks for helping us fucking raid. Thank you very much. Jesus. <laughs> the, the ego on some people. We, we as a guild have brought your alts to fill in where needed. And this is the thanks we get. We couldn't raid without you, and this is how you thank us? Really? <laughs> he continued on, eventually ending with, Thanks for the betrayal, and then removed me from Real ID. The ultimate punishment, being removed from Real ID for someone you barely know. I don't know what it is, but I seem to find some ragey GMs. I had told the guild that had just recruited me that I couldn't raid with them, and I had some things to work out. Why? Why did you say that? Why did you say that? <laughs> I logged onto my old TeamSpeak and talked to my old GM. Why? Why did you do that? <laughs> Why? Why give a shit? My side of the story was that I didn't want to be a standby in Group 2. I felt like I was getting nowhere and I wanted my own raid spot. Plus a Rouge had joined the guild and was invited to a trial run. So I was like, great, what now? You're inviting more people over me. Never mind the fact that my friend had a raid spot and was surpassing me in gear... Gear score. There's a gear score difference making. His side of the story was they were actually considering me for a spot. There was no spot available in the 10 man. 
and all the officers were considering me as well. What does that even mean? What does that even mean? We are considering you for a raid spot. Hmm. Should we or should we not? I don't know. Let's think about this for a while. Let's, let's spend many hours thinking about this. It sounds like they're Ents from Lord of the Rings, right? They have to discuss it. We have decided you are a Dwarf Hunter. <laughs> we have finally reached a decision. You are a Dwarf Hunter. I had talked regular to the officers and didn't know what I... Uh, and they didn't know what I was talking about. He also said that he was testing me to see if I would stay loyal to the guild. <laughs> what? I am testing you by not inviting you to raids. If he leaves, he's a dick, right? <laughs> I'm testing you. It's a test. That's what you say when you run out of all fucking ideas of what to tell somebody is we're testing you. It was a test. <laughs> I ignored you for weeks. Girlfriend, and now I'm desperate for sex because I was testing to see if you would leave me. I literally ignored you for weeks until now when I was really horny because it was a test. <laughs> you failed the test by not obeying my cock and being here immediately. You failed the test, right? That is the last dish effort of a desperate man. That is the last ditch effort. Yeah, you shall not pass. <laughs> you shall not pass. It was a test. I was joking. It was a joke, right? Not inviting you to the raid was a joke. That shit was jokes, man. Don't get all touchy about it. <laughs> it's a test. Not having known I was being considered. You weren't being considered. I left because someone, come on, who wants to be in group two. <laughs> Usually you tell someone you want in your raid if you're planning on considering them. To me, I see it this way. Those who don't know they are being tested shall ultimately fail. Well, probably. I'm mean, being tested. Uh, why? This is World of Warcraft. What are you testing me about? What are you testing me on? Are you testing whether or not I don't want to be invited to raids? Because I appear to be passing that test with blind colors. Eventually we talked it out and I rejoined the guild like a soppy bollocks. Nice. <laughs> Due to me leaving, I was no longer a standby. Forever Group 3. You got demoted? You came back to the guild and got demoted to Group 3. <laughs> Dude, you were under consideration for a raid spot. You should come back. Okay, you're not even a fucking standby now. Now it's a test, motherfucker. Now you're being tested. Now you're being tested, bitch. Yeah, come back. Group 3. Motherfucker. But I was still able to do raids if they needed me. You guys put up with some shit, man. I'm telling you. You put up with some shit. At this point, a few people in the group were either replaced or dropped. And the guild was trying to progress in Heroic Dragon Soul. Problems arose because every raid day, at least two people wouldn't show up for the raid. But I was. And I always was on for every raid day. In the end, the raid would be called till the next raid day. Our GM wasn't exactly a great GM. No. No way. For he was rarely on. And would never recruit for the guild. But he managed to get you back though, didn't he? You bitch. Just kidding. I'm not really though. You were a bitch. You being a bitch. <clears throat> for the one raid we actually got going, I solo tanked the first four bosses on my blood DK. By then, the main tank had logged on and I was removed from the group. <laughs> I tanked all the bosses for them. The tank logs on and they removed me from the group. <laughs> Fuck you. Seriously. <laughs> that is genius. <laughs> that is really good. After that, I decided again to look for a new guild on my blood DK. And I found doing heroic prog and, uh, and I found one doing heroic progression. This time I had talked to the GM about leaving and he didn't mind at all. No, no, it's okay. Tank's online now, you can leave. So now I was prog progressing in my own Dragon Soul heroic guild and my friends his. After doing a couple of runs with the guild, I got bored because Dragon Soul wasn't all too exciting and could have been better. My friend's guild had fallen apart due to the GM taking gold out of the guild bank in order to buy a vial of the Sands Mount. <laughs> there was that day when the GM had a vial of the Sands Mount and there was like 50,000 gold missing out of the guild bank and it was just a coincidence. Dudes, I think I got hacked. I think the hacker logged on, emptied the guild bank and bought me a vial of the Sands Mount. And then takes all his gear off and he's like, I'm naked except for this mount. 
But still, don't leave the guild. It's fine, guys. It's fine. I don't care if, uh, where this money came from. I really don't. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> this GM is legit. He sounds like Ghost. <laughs> it's the Ghost GM. Me and my friend had hit a point where WoW was very boring and we both agreed to raid uh, in the next expansion. Fast forward to missed launch. By now we're both 17, me and my friend. hoo Pubes are flowing. We had started talking with someone who had started a raid guild for mop progression. My friend had raided with this guy in the past. And we had both agreed to join him. The original guild was on Ravenholt, but was eventually moved to Korgath. We shortly moved afterwards with my shaman and my friend's fire mage. The only problem was my friend wasn't capped and could only play at my house due to an internet problem. Is that internet problem that he doesn't have any? I don't have it. Bro, do you even internet? No, I don't. The dog's fired. Dude. Bros, really? Look at this. And he fired. In that position. So I can't even get angry, can I? I can't even moan. Like, unbelievable. <sighs> Just chilling. Just chilling. Just chilling. Ugh, stinks. <laughs> uh, he wasn't capped. I could only play at my house due to an internet problem he was having. My friend was very determined to get to 90 despite having to play at my house. And in addition, he started to work a lot more. So he got very little playtime but still clitched it to 90. He was on. However, for when we worked out all the detail of the raid group and the raid lineup, after a few weeks had gone by, we both reached the required item level to start raiding. We still needed some healers and a lot of people kept changing their class. So I would constantly ask what the lineup was. One day, I asked the GM, and he said the lineup again for me only. This time, my friend was not included. Confused, I asked what happened. The GM replied that because he wasn't on a lot, they didn't think he was going to be able to... to make the raids. Raids weren't supposed to start for three weeks. I kind of agree. I am kind of all over that story. If your friend can't really even level, he's probably going to have to miss some raids. I'm kind of okay with that. I know you're going to be pissed off about it, but I'm kind of okay with it. I would probably make a similar decision. We had even talked about the problem twice before. When I had told my friend, he was also confused and got on one night to talk to the GM. The night before, I had talked to the GM. Uh, and when he talked to my friend, he gave a totally different story and made me look like the bad guy. In addition to this, a week before this, we had been doing Dragon Soul for a transmog run. <laughs> Don't raid transmog. Don't raid Dragon Soul when it's current because it's boring. Raid Dragon Soul for transmog. What are you doing? What are you fucking doing? Why? What? Oh, I'm not raiding Dragon Soul. It's boring. Hey, do you want to raid Dragon Soul? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, of course I do. Transmog, totally different story. <laughs> In the raid, I had taken a, out a spirit flask because I had an off heal set and needed some spirit to not run out of mana. At level 90 in Dragon Soul? That shit ain't gonna fly. <laughs> That's not gonna fly. I was an officer in the guild because I was very helpful with people who needed it. Watching your vids helped. Awesome. A couple of days later, I found out I had been demoted and I was confused. So I talked to the GM about it. The first thing he said to me was, why did I take a flask out of the G-Bank? Your GM is a baller, right? He doesn't miss a fucking trick. Your GM is on the fucking case. I'm telling you. He's like, this guy took flasks out of the guild bank for the transmog run. I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think you're ready to be an officer if you don't understand why we don't want you to take flasks for transmog runs of old content. I'm pretty sure that's why you got demoted. And I actually totally agree. It's like, oh, make this guy officer. Takes flasks for transmog runs. Demoted. <laughs> At least replace it. I, although I might say, replace it. Don't do that, dickhead. That is a really stupid thing to do. <laughs> Where were we? Paragraphs, people. I responded to him that when he scolded me on it, even though they were super cheap, he also told me that it was a way to get my attention. <laughs> Ever hear of in-game mail or about how about a PDF? Nice. Nice. <laughs> After having been demoted for a stupid reason, and my friend being stabbed in the back, we decided we didn't want to deal with this crap anymore. Not to mention some of the drama a lot of people brought. We decided to leave this guild. This brings me to where I am today. Me and my friend are currently looking for another guild for my unholy DK and a fire mage. Not much luck, but you're still searching. 
I hope this story sprinkled with drama. Hope you enjoy it. We did enjoy it, but you made quite a few fucking goof ups in that story. Yes, you did. You made quite a few goof ups. I kind of your GM actually in the last guild is okay. <laughs> GM was on the case. He was like, "Nah, fuck that shit. Uh, I don't want to do that." <laughs> that was pretty cool. That was a good story. I'll give, <laughs> I'll give you a spreadsheet of why I needed the transmog. <laughs> Unholy DK. Unholy DK. Okay. Uh, I'll finish you off with a brief overview of my final drama story. I kind of touched on this um, a little while. Last Drama Friday. It's like an hour and a half into Drama Day. My phone is starting to go. Hey, mate. I was... Let's cast you back to Vanilla. Our story begins in Vanilla. In Vanilla, I was part of a guild with the uber name The Berserkers, right? It was my first major raiding guild. 40-man raiding guild. Tough stuff. As you may know if you've ever watched Storytime 1 or 2, I was a complete fucking asshole. Super asshole, right? Not to my friends, I was fine with my friends, helped them out and stuff, but to general, in general, I was like, getting into the mode of being super serious, super amazing raider. So raiding Molten Core, very, very serial. Wiping on Anixia, very important stuff, okay? So I was playing a troll priest, I know. And I was almost at the stage where I was Mr. Raid Leader. Essentially, I was making a lot of decisions, uh, which was cool. A couple of the good guys had left, and some of our major staple players had left the guild. But we were kind of doing okay. We were just about ready to kill Razor Gore. That's the progression level we're at. We've cleared Molten Core repeatedly, and we're now working on Razor Gore. And we're starting to get a little bit of control over this fight. We're almost there. To the point where our players in the Berserkers were not very good. Whereas at Razor Gore, you had to kite dragons. This would usually be done by, say, a hunter. Our hunters weren't really good enough to do that. So we had things like Resto Shaman, Frost Shot kiting the dragons. <laughs> things like that. We had one major problem with this guild. And it was from a little country called Serbia. Yeah, Serbia. I have nothing against Serbians. But I was in this problem where a good 30% of the guild was Serbian. And all friends. Real life friends who all played from the same web cafe. Yes. The same web cafe. These friends were... Consisted of a variety of people. The guild master, Lovak, who I've mentioned before. Very sound of mind. Very nice guy. A rogue named Adonai, who... To this day, could have been one of the best raid leaders in World of Warcraft. He was fantastic, very calm, and knew his shit. A troll tank warrior called Maverick, who, as you can imagine, by being a troll and a name from Top Gun, was a bit shit. We also had a Resto Druid who believed he was the best thing ever to play this game. His name was Poison, with a Z. And our main tank, a Serbian player who goes by the name of Red X. Red X. Red X is a complete cunt. Red X is the biggest cunt you will ever meet in your life. Red X doesn't log on for raids. Red X likes to log on for raids when he might get loot and then log off. Red X, being the fully geared main tank, doesn't log on for things like Blackwing Lair because he can't be asked wiping. Red X doesn't even bother playing when raids are coming on. Instead, he chooses to battleground. Yes, he's your main tank. This is your main tank, okay? He's online. He's in battlegrounds. You whisper him. He doesn't reply. I'm an officer in this guild. and starting to kind of become the raid leader by force because I'm a dick. I was kind of forcing people out of uh, being raid leaders, especially Adonai, who was awesome, and Lovak, who was also cool. So we then get to the stage where, essentially, Lovak, the guildmaster, starts playing Red X. Lovak is a hunter, but he starts having to play Red X on progression raids because Red X, the super amazing tank, who was awful, by the way, terrible fucking player, uh, doesn't show up. He never shows up. Apparently, he runs the web cafe and is extremely busy. Too busy, in fact, that he manages to stay in Arathi Basin and Warsong Gulch. And I absolutely hate most of this fucking team. And I am doing my utmost to kick them. I kick anybody for any reason. I did. I was that guy. You pissed me off, I kicked you. If you were a priest, God help you. I would kick you for fucking anything. 
I was a bit of a dick. You turned. I, I kicked someone once for turning up for a fun alt raid as Shadow. I kicked them from the guild. Because raiding is super serious. This might be a fun raid. But you take it seriously. And I kicked them from the guild. Uh, I didn't like them anyway. Whatever. Uh, so <laughs> I, I was that kind of guy. But I was not allowed to kick Red X, Poison, or Maverick. Any of those people. Because they were part of Team Serbia. Team Serbia. Team Serbia Web Cafe. Um, were protected by the Mighty Lovak. Who was the guild master. Because they were all his real friends. Right? They were all his real life buddy bums. And they see each other all the time. All this kind of shit. Uh, and I wasn't allowed to touch them. As much as I could hover. Hover my mouse over that kick button. I could never press it. Things were going okay. And I hadn't taken a holiday for a long time. And genuinely. I didn't want to go on holiday. Because I wanted to raid. We were on the, cr the cusp of a razor go kill. Which was very important in vanilla. And I was there. I was ready to do it. And Emma, being of sound mind, wanted to go on holiday. And decided to book us a holiday to Israel. Israel! I had recommended Israel to her a couple of years past. Because I had visited Israel about four times during my childhood. And loved it every single time. I love the sea. I love diving. There's wonderful, wonderful fish in the Red Sea. I was very, very excited to take Emma to Israel. So one day she tells me, I've booked the holiday to go to Israel. You owe me some money. I was like, ooh. <laughs> it's like forever alone. I didn't want to go. I wanted to raid. I did not. I had not missed the first kill in this guild since the very first boss. I was there for every single kill. And I wanted to be there for the first raise go kill. Because I had spent a lot of gold wiping on that boss. And I took it extremely seriously. So against my better judgment, we went on holiday. Certain rules were applied. <laughs> such as... I am not allowed to go on the internet. I have to stay away from PCs. I have to do all this kind of stuff and just enjoy myself. Emma could quite easily see that I was taking WoW far too fucking seriously. One problem that existed is that I also had a number of friends who weren't RL friends. But friends that I had played with over several MMOs. Not Genji. Genji hadn't moved to the EU servers yet. But I had a wonderful friend who's in Stark called Bob's Dog. You might know him as Bob's dog. He was known as X-Men then, a warlock. I had a wonderful friend. He was also in Stark now called Zaraki. Zaraki is a Scottish fireball of death. Zaraki doesn't take shit from anybody. And during Molten Core, loved loot. Because he believed he was the PvP god of the fucking universe. <laughs> right? <laughs> Back when warriors literally had two buttons, which was Mortal Strike and overpower <laughs> that was about it uh zaraki was kicking ass and taking names he's also a dj and stuff and he's pretty fucking awesome i love zaraki but zaraki also has a temper and he cares about his loot there was a war brewing for quite a long time over who would get thunder fury zaraki believed he should get thunder fury red x also believed he should get thunder fury <laughs> right red x believed he should get thunder fury because he's the main tank who doesn't fucking show up to any of the raids thunder fury luckily had never fucking dropped right thunder fury had never dropped none of the bindings had ever fucking dropped in the history of time and we had been farming molten core for a long 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 time a long long time so i visited israel i'm enjoying myself everything's great i'm on the beaches I'm having a McDavid's. Yeah, in Israel, there's a McDavid's. I'm serious. It's awesome. I was having a great time. And then suddenly, <laughs> about a 10, 11 days, we're going back in like three days, back to uh, sunny old England and back to raiding. I was kind of not missing raiding at all. I loved the break. Emma had it right. I decided to go on the internet cafe and check the guild forums. Yeah. World War fucking 12 had broken out in the guild. People were leaving the guild left and right. <laughs> and it had all gone pear-shaped because Thunder Fury had dropped in the only raid of Molten Core I had not been to in about four fucking months. Thunder Fury bi uh, binding had dropped and it kicked off royally over who would get fucking Thunder Fury. I wasn't that interested in items even then. But apparently a deal had been struck where Zaraki would be getting Thunder Fury. But Red X, for one of the first times in his fucking life, was on his own character 
in Molten Core while I was away. The odds of this situation occurring are astronomically small. I cannot express enough how ridiculous it is that this event happened while I wasn't there to sort of mediate and sort it out. I'm not there. Red X is playing his own fucking character. Red X and Zaraki are both in the raid and a Thunder Fury binding drops. Red X, of course, got it. <laughs> he took the fucking Thunder Fury and it all kicked off. It royal. It, like, he wasn't playing anymore. He'd taken his Thunder Fury and he was fucking leaving. It was all the war of attrition that was going on. Zaraki didn't give a shit anymore. He, and Zaraki basically told him to fuck off. You're a prick. All this. I logged into the forums. There's people in the officer chat going mental. It's all gone absolutely terrible. And they were like, How quickly are you coming back? When are you coming back? I posted saying, Okay, we'll sort this out when I get back. Like, I was the guy who had to sort it out. I wasn't the GM, I was an officer. I was like, okay, I'll sort this out when we get back. I arrived back in the UK and <laughs> it was, I had to sort this situation out. Ultimately, we decided Red X would not be raiding with us anymore. So we lost our main tank. We kind of needed, this is the sad thing. Gear was so important on the tanks then that we kind of needed him. We had recruited a new tank. I believe he was called Dead Soul. Dead Soul was 10 years old. I didn't know that. Red X had been kicked or left, whichever you want to say. He wasn't raiding anymore. He was still in the guild. Red X wasn't raiding anymore. And suddenly there's a new undead warrior, like a boss, who is called Dead Soul. <laughs> and I think he's okay, but he makes silly mistakes. It turns out he's 10 years old, this kid. He's 10 years old. And he's got full gear. He must have bought the account, I would have thought. He wasn't good enough to have cleared Mortal Core, but he had a full might set, which was fucking amazing. So Dead Soul, the 10-year-old tank, was actually doing okay. Enough for Molten Core. I had no big issue. So Dead Soul is now the new tank. And we're... I'm kind of just piecing things together. We ultimately decide to go to Blackwing Lair. Ben's snoring. Blackwing Lair. And I decided to do this because Poison was in the raid. Poison was the Resto Druid and you needed Resto Druids to also sleep the dragons. I noticed we have four Druids in the raid. Something that very rarely happens. I'm talking about a guild that if you say you're going to Anixia, there's 60 people online. If you're going to Molten Core, there's 60 people online. If you're going to Blackwing Lair, there's 20 people online. It's one of those guilds. So I say we're going Molten Core. Everybody logs on. I schedule a Molten Core. We have four druids in a raid. I say, right, we're going to Blackwing Lair. I was that guy. I was like, no, 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 we're going to Blackwing Lair. People start logging off. Right? Actually, just straight up, just logging off. I say, get to Blackwing Lair. You were logging off. And then that's when I start kicking people. <laughs> I get the kick button ready. There's more people online who aren't in raid chat and don't know we're going to uh, Blackwing Lair. So I start kicking anybody who logs off. You log off, I kick you from the guild. You log off, I kick you from the guild. You complain, I kicked you from the guild. It was that night. I was like, I'm sick to fucking death of people not showing up for Blackwing Lair. I just start mass kicking like a twat. Absolutely fucking doing them. Ultimately, we end up with 35 or 36 people in Blackwing Lair. But I'm stuck to my guns. I'm being stubborn. We shouldn't really be doing this without 40 people, but fuck them. I'm taking this guild to Blackwing Lair. Poison stayed in the raid. Poison stayed in the raid. This was odd, because Poison is a massive asshole. A real big asshole. And he's just online. He's just chilling. He's online. He's, he's in the raid, and he's in Blackwing Lair. So we start doing a pull. We wipe. Come back. Poison's still in the raid. He's kind of doing his job. No big deal. And then this happens. I'm playing and I'm in Poison's corner. I notice Poison starts casting the longest healing touch I have ever seen. Being someone who pays attention to this shit, I click on him. He's heartstoning. In the middle of the second pull, Poison is fucking heartstoning out of my raid. Remember, I am the ultimate dick right at this point. I'm the worst raid leader you can possibly have. And I'm watching this fucking guy heart stoning out of my raid. I start fucking screaming on Ventrilo. He's in Vent. I'm like, what are you fucking doing? Why are you leaving? I lose my shit. I've already kicked like 12 people from the guild. And I'm now losing my mind. I'm absolutely fed up. I've lost it. I'm completely raging like a motherfucker. I'm going crazy. Doesn't reply. Not a single fucking word. And I finally do it. I mouse over him and I thought, this is enough reason. Verez is here. Verez can account for this. There's a wonderful guy. Please say hello to him. He's got pink writing because he has his ass slapped in Holland. Verez right there was in this guild. And I'm sure he was there when this happened. So please say hello to Verez. My ballers, please just say hello to Verez. Because he's a wonderful guy. And he will back up that these stories are in fact true. Hello, Mr. Verez. 
so Verez is one of the shames. Verez will account for this. Verez, do you remember Blackwing Lair? You being asked over the hunters to kite drakes because you were capable of not only moving and pressing frost shock. Razor go training. Can you remember doing that, Mr. Verez? <laughs> Mr. Verez will back me up. These stories are 100% accurate. <laughs> See, he remembers it very well. Yep, he can remember doing that. Okay, so Poison has heartstoned out of the raid. And he's not replying to me. He's not saying anything. And I was raging. I, I mean, I was I was raging so fucking hard. And, in, and on the other side of the screen, I'm just like a ball of rage. An absolute anger machine. And I mouse over it. I'm looking at it. And everything in me, logically, is saying, do not kick this guy. It's going to cause so much drama. We've already lost the main tank, Red X. And now we're going to lose poison as well. And we need a druid to do Razor Gore. What are we going to do? And I'm just looking at it. And I'm just looking at it. And then I was like, fuck you, man. Fuck you. Get out of my guild. I kick him. I'm not even the guild master. Right? I'm like, kick that bitch. And I kicked poison. And I literally ejaculated everywhere. I was like, oh, God. That felt so good. I was so happy that I kicked that bastard. Then the real drama starts. Apparently, <laughs> this is the story I was told, right, afterwards. Poison starts whispering me about 45 minutes later. What the fuck is your problem? What is wrong with you? You are a massive retard. All this kind of stuff in big caps lock letters. Ooh, scary shit, right? All this caps lock starts coming at me. 45 minutes after I kicked him from the guild. 45 minutes straight. I then start getting these whispers. And I'm like, what is... You heart stoned out the raid. No, I didn't. This is what he says to me. No, I didn't. I was like, you did. You, we were in Blackwing Lair. You heart stoned in the middle of the second pull and then just didn't reply to me. No, I didn't. <laughs> and then he goes, it wasn't me. I'm like, what? It wasn't me. I'm like, are you kidding me? He says, I'm in the web cafe. I left my druid logged on. Somebody came along and played my druid for like two hours. I was like... This cannot be fucking real. Seriously. And then I said, I don't fucking believe you. I do not believe you. That is bullshit. Absolute bullshit. You lying bastard. He's like, no. And how dare you? And he starts raging at me. Something shocking. Is how fucking dare you? Who do you think you are? Because this was a Serbian run guild. The Serbians were in charge, baby. Not me. And the Serbians were losing their shit because he'd been kicked from the guild. Who was this guy? This troll priest who had kicked this guy from the guild unbelievable this drama just started going mental but i wasn't giving up because i was a dick right so i just started raging back at him i was like you're a motherfucking asshole i'm like really pissed off at this guy i was just like yeah you're fucking full of shit this guy just picked up your fucking character and started playing it came to blackwing lair found the entrance to blackwing lair got in the raid and started doing his job and then you noticed and heart stoned him he's like yeah that's what happened i'm like no it isn't bullshit Eventually, Lovac logs on and invites Poison back to the guild and really undermines me. And I was, I mean, he was in his right to do that, I suppose. But it undermined me so fucking terrible. <laughs> I mean, I was like, I've just kicked this guy from the raid. He's like, we can't do, we can't raid without Poison. Poison had attended possibly, maybe Verez could even back me up on this. One in 12 raids. This guy actually bothered to fucking show up. And when he did, he was a dick. Uh, and, you know, we can't do Razor Gore without him. So he has to come back to the raid. And then he, he the smugness when he came back, he whispered, he was like, I told you I'd get back in the guild. You were a fucking useless, blah, blah, blah. Uh, gave me all this shit about it. Ultimately, I got to kick him again because he really goofed up. I can't remember what he did. It was somewhat really minor, and I said, I can kick him now, right? And he was like, yeah. I think he left again during Blackwing Lair attempts. Uh, he did something like, Blackwing Lair, I'm not coming, just openly said it. And he was like, right, well, you're not a raider. Demoted him to non-raider. I just sent him a smile. I shouldn't have said anything. But I did. Fuck him. I sent him just a smile. As I said, preach his demoted poison to non-raider. Smile. <laughs> In whisper. Something ridiculous like that. Super fucking awesome moment. And it was a very victorious smile, I might add. Sending that smile to that guy. F him. And then we left and the guild fell apart. In fact, Verez abandoned us as well and went on to some... I mean, you can actually... I know I told you to say hello to Verez, but you can actually hate on him because he left our guild and left me there alone like a mo motherfucker. Went on to some Nax guild. <laughs> motherfucker. Actually making the right decision, but fuck you, Verez. It's been two long hours of me talking. <laughs> two long hours of me talking. Uh, I'm kind of done. I'm kind of done. <laughs> fuck you, Verez. <laughs>
<laughs> Fuck you, Verez. Uh, all in good jest, though. We did meet Verez IRL. I still have pictures of him on my screen somewhere. Uh, I'm going to leave you two long hours as often. Oh, two hours for your first daily? Awesome. That's cool. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow. It's web show tomorrow. Please send us your bro fists. Fill that map for us, ballers. Fill it up. Or oh, Ben will eat you. Want pictures? Send us pictures. So easy to do. Send us a picture. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow at 8 p.m. I will be joined by Ghosty. And last but not least, please check out PreachGaming.com and let us know if you are interested or is it even possible for you to attend a gathering in England. I know so many of you are not in England. And I apologize that I live on like the smallest country. I'm really sorry. I would love to be in the US. I would. And hopefully in the next couple of years, maybe next year, we will be in the US for a gathering. I would love for that to happen. Uh, I know so many of you are from there. And also Australia. There's events I want to do everywhere, but we're not big enough yet, as you guys well know. So I'm hoping. But if you can come to England and spend an evening with us and have some great fun live, I would appreciate that. I would appreciate it. All right, guys. Take it easy. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. It's weekend. It's important. Do something. Do something cool. Because you'll be working and shit again on Monday. All right, guys. Bye.